G'day guys, this is Brent Carter here coming from Wine for the People, our little venture into uh, bringing you uh, some of the more exciting things that are actually coming from Australian wine. And this time we've got six Aussie banging orange wines uh, to be able to show you today. So uh, join me and Noah uh, while we taste through some of the really exciting stuff coming from around here. All right, guys, welcome uh, to a, a bit of a roundup. We're going to look at uh, six uh, Aussie banging orange wines. Um, but first, what the fuck is orange wine? Not made from oranges? Not made from oranges. Not made from oranges. It's one of those things that we constantly get asked about uh, by customers literally everywhere around the world. This wine style is actually very, very old, isn't it? Georgian. Ancient Georgian is where it particularly the came from. country, not the state. Yes, not, not Georgia. America. But um, no, it, it is actually, it's trending more and more and more. Um, I, I think it's for, for a whole multitude of reasons, but um, uh, in particular, um, I, I think it's probably to do with like a lot of its diversity. I think we, the the joy of it is that it's a, it gives a lot of like creativity to the winemaker where you can play around with different, you know, there's no real rules of um, how long you can keep things on skins or where you can age it or anything like that. So you can really play around and get expressive and, you know, kind of create your own wine have a bit style. of fun with it have a bit of fun i yeah. think one of those things and i suppose uh, it sort of breeds into this other idea of of course okay like orange wine 101 essentially you have red wine comes from red grapes or black grapes but red grapes okay and then you have white wine it comes from white grapes then you have essentially rosé okay rosé is essentially red grapes made like white wine and then you have orange wine or Right. Technically, what we have to call it in Australia is amber wine, which skin is really contact, fun, but... skin contact, skin fermented white wine, amber blend. Yeah, so it's white grapes made like red wine. And it's actually a really, really simple thing. And for me, it's actually quite. Um, uh, uh, and this is where I, I, I'm always in the realm of esoteric, which is a great segue because we're going to be checking out Esoterico. So for those of you who actually follow, you know, a lot of what we do, uh, Esoterico is our cheeky little uh, orange wine. Uh, that we, we craft out of um, this amazing vineyard. We're gonna actually see a couple of different um, uh, expressions or two different expressions of this particular vineyard actually like right now. But um, a bit of a thing on, and because this could get us in hot water, I'm not sure if you know this, but um, in Australia, uh, we, we technically, not technically, actually expressly, we can't use the term orange wine. No. It's weird. It's funny uh, because uh, like we have, for those of you who are watching this who aren't actually from Australia, we have a wine region called Orange, um, which can be very, very confusing because in Orange Wine, they can make wine called Orange yeah. Wine. They can even make Orange Wine Orange. Orange Wine Orange, and orange uh, Swinging Bridge, Orange yeah. Wine from Orange. It's fantastic, it's right? It's delicious too. <laughs> But, but yeah, exactly. So um, we, we are sort of forced by, by um, I guess, our regulatory body to, to talk about um, uh, orange wine as amber wine or skin contact wine. But uh, so a massive apology to um, Wine Australia, but we're going to use the global term um, that, that is actually more globally yeah. relevant for people and apologies to the people of Orange. And, and all, all winemakers in Orange, we love because you. Because we loved you. They're absolutely... Underrated. Yeah. Underrated. And, and yeah, that's a, that'll be a, uh, there'll be a Keep future um, uh, blog post, I think, on underrated wine regions. Keep an eye out. But um, all right, cool. Let's talk Esoterico. So Esoterico um, it was this awesome, awesome little vineyard uh, based in the Riverland. So Riverland is this classified desert of an area, less than 300 mil of rain every year. Uh, and there's this one vineyard up there that um, uh, was planted in 1945, um, made out of a variety called Zabibo. Zabibo is one of the most ancient grape varieties uh, known to man. It's the the aromatic, uh, it was the mother of most aromatic grape varieties. Things like, um, you know, Riesling or even like things like Sauvignon Blanc all have some sort of like musket derived um, parentage or heritage. And Alpha this is and Omega. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so um, here, this is uh, we could do this for this. This is the orange index. Um, it's it's it is quite like distinctly yellow. Now this is this is all made exclusively from white grapes. So this is what happens when you leave it on its skins for a little while. Um, How long did you guys leave it on skins this year? This is generally with this summer we will do about like two weeks. I mean, it's not the greater number isn't necessarily better. It's just an artistic variant of what you want to do. But um, uh, typically, um, you know, two weeks will tend to be like the minimum. Uh, the thing that actually gives it its color, it's not necessarily skins, it's actually um, uh, its proximity like basically being on its skins, but then proximity to oxygen, maturation ah. over time, uh, without a lot of additive things like sulfur and whatnot. And that's, I suppose, one of those big things about the popularity of um, 
orange wine now is that um, you know we can get away with using less sulfur for white wine and this is a, a very topical thing is overuse of sulfur in the wine industry because it's got this phenolic structure to it from its skins um, it holds it together and allows it to be almost like sacrificial to oxygen but what do you, you reckon? You don't even need to put your nose that close to the glass like this entire room smells like apricots and nectarines and just like light stone fruit it's so much fun. So Zabibo, and this is probably one of the coolest things about this particular wine, is uh, Zabibo is really, really, really aromatic. It's musket. It's musket of, you know, it's got synonyms like musket of Alexandria or what in Australia we like to call fruity gordo. Um, bastardizing uh, uh, great names all the time. But um, that's the Brown Brothers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really high acid, actually, mm. quite surprisingly. A uh, high, amount, high amount of acid. I mean, look, I know this one on the back of my hand, but no, uh, I shouldn't say baby. it's that surprising. It's your baby. Um, well, but, for, for me, it's just like that fruit character is just so forward and inviting. And then there's that kind of that phenolic structure really comes through and just balances it all out and makes it really moorish and makes it really grippy. Yeah. And there's still this kind of element of creaminess that's almost like a, like a yogurty, almost like apricotty, mm. but that kind of um, high acid balance there. It's, it's just so much fun. This wine is just so much fun. So we mature this for almost a year in these um, big botte grandi, these like massive casks with uh, you know no additions of sulfur or anything like this. So uh, it can actually develop a lot of those characters. But it is worth to note there is a couple of other varieties inside this. So outside of Zabibo, we have a little bit of Fiano. We also have a little bit of Fiano, of course, we love it. Um, and uh, Moscato Giallo, which is a yellow musket. Uh, very, very, very high uh, acidity. And this sort of balances out the lower acidity of Zabibo. But um, should we move on to the next one? Yeah, well, we should, we should uh, share our vineyard partner. Mm, mm. Totally. So there is another, there's another kick-ass, awesome orange wine um, that actually comes from the same vineyard, hails from the same vineyard. Indeed, um, we, we weren't even the first ones to do it. This guy was. Um, so this fella here, this guy's an absolute badass of, of wine. He's like one of the original yeah, like, guys. And he's not from Australia originally. We've sort of inherited him. Uh, willingly adopted him. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, in, into the, the the winemaker scenes. His name is Brad Hickey, uh, and he has this awesome uh, wine brand called Brash Higgins. If you can sort of make that out there, um, I love this wine. Yeah, the, I, I, I actually have not had this wine before, so I'm really excited. Oh really? <laughs> I love this one. Um, I've so, had a couple of his wines, and he does some really cool stuff with. Uh, he does some great Nero from Clarence. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Um, he does probably one of the most infamous wines in Australia, which is the Bloom. Um, Jura style shardy, yeah, which yeah. I still have yet yeah. to ha have, but I'm you know, desperate to have a go at. But I'm quite particularly excited to this. But it's obviously quite paler than our table. Yeah, yeah. So grape. it is, it is, and it's um, there is a, a, a big degree of clarity here. Now, from my understanding, and, and um, you know, I encourage everyone to watch this to actually get in touch with uh, these winemakers. All the uh, links to actually access the website we're actually going to put below this video. Um, but, Some may um, be sold out, so sorry. Yeah, so these are, it is worth to note, um, like made in really, 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 really small quantities. Um, and it, no more than, than I'm going to say, this particular wine. This, yeah. uh, as opposed to what we do with Esoterico, this is, this is uh, an incredible expression of that vineyard. And only a tiny amount is made every single year uh, with the use of uh, clay amphora. Mm. Um, uh, incredibly risky style of winemaking. If things go wrong, and indeed, if you go through um, the Brash Higgins Instagram, there is an, an, an amazing like image of the entire, like someone's broken an entire amphora and it's not yeah. like when you break a clay vessel, it's not like it drips out. Uh, it's just gone. Uh, and that's, that's, it, it, it really raises the stakes in this sort of style of winemaking. Um, but yeah, just a couple little notes why it's just been on uh, skin seeds, everything uh, left in amphora for six months, plunged twice daily for the first two weeks until ferment's done and then natural flora occurred in the ferment. Yeah. So it's, Pretty wacko. Pretty wacko. Seventy-year-old bush vines. Who would have thought that you would find sort of these these abibo vines? You know, nineteen forty-five oh, yeah. planted bush vines uh, in a, in a place that that is actually quite well known for its its bulk winemaking, not really like mm. high-quality winemaking. And it showcases like you know, having a look at wines like this really showcase that it's not about where it's grown, it's about how it's grown and how it's made. Uh, you know, when it's made with with techniques that. And this isn't his first go at this. He was he was he's been doing this for a while now. Yeah. Um, probably at least. Seven or eight years, I, I, I would, I would imagine. Um, but uh, stunning. Um, it's a lot more of a floral take. Yeah, I was going to say it's like, it's like lots of white flowers. It's like you've literally just grabbed a whole like bucket of jasmine and just gone. Yeah, yeah, and I'm okay like, with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And on the orange index, not um, not so much. You'd actually mistake this for just like a like you know. Uh, it almost looks like a like an older style piano or like a Riesling kind like of. Like a Chardonnay thing. with a couple of couple of yeah. years middle age. So it's not that abrupt. So for those of you that are like trying to get into orange wine, or it's a little bit you know it's a little bit challenging. This is a great little um, yeah. uh, way to access. It's a really fun little wine. Mmm. Lifted acidity too. Mm. Super clean, super fresh, and this crackling um, acid line on that. Oh, woohoo! That that is just so well rounded, and that is yeah, that that could that could go down a tree. That is like walking through like so spring many white flowers. Springtime garden. Yeah, this is blooming. Oh, All right. Um, that's awesome. How, should, that's we, so how cool. should we go? What's next? Should we go to another original, another OG of the industry? Yeah. Oh, yeah. One of one yeah. of my faves. As far as like the hardcore natural producers of Australia, you, you can't really go past Yama and Yama. James Erskine. So James, James, and I have been um, uh, mates for for a fairly long time. In fact, um, when we were starting up Unico, he was um, uh, sort of one of those people that really sort of helped guide our hands in the industry and and really like was a part of um, a triplicate. It was actually a, a, a quadruplicate uh, of um, uh, natural wine producers inside Australia around about maybe five or six years ago called the um, Natural Selection Theory. Um, so it was Sam and uh, Anton Monclopper, um, Tom Shawbrook uh, himself, um, and they sort of all um, banded together to really break down a lot of barriers of what Australian wine uh, was and uh, entertain what Australian wine could potentially be. And these guys were the, uh, I'm gonna say the more dogmatic guys that really pushed the industry, the super avant-garde. Yeah. Um, and in particular, James's uh, approach is just like otherworldly when it comes to, to handling of vineyards and biodynamic practices. Um, uh, this guy's just He's like, meticulous. for me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge, like mega fanboy, uh, yeah. evidently. Um, but his little wine brand, Yalma, has been um, uh, challenging the mold for, see if we can make that out, uh, challenging the mold for quite a, a fair amount of time. So, um, Noah, tell us about this one, because my understanding is it's changed, it's yeah. altered every single year, it's a little bit different. It's, it's a weird, wacky blend. So, it's uh, particularly this year, it's a mostly a equal parts blend of uh, Chenin Blanc and Musket. Cool. I think, I'm not exactly sure what musket, I should have, I didn't check that far ahead. I honestly couldn't find too much on this. Uh, and it's actually got a tiny little bit of Shiraz in here, I think about 5%, which is kind of, I can actually, you can kind of see like an almost pinky hue on on it. How's the, the really orange cool. spectrum on that? It's um, cool, it's almost like Pinot Gris-ish, like, like yeah. a Ramato style Pinot Gris, mm. like there's little copper tones and stuff like that. Very Super cool. Super fun. But it has been, you know, more Semyon based and Shannon based in previous years. So. Shannon's a bit of a thing for him. Yeah, and he as makes well. really, really good ones. He does like a couple of a couple of different Shannons, like Cabernet Franc, he's an yeah. amazing story. Grenache, of course. His is Grenache huge is from thing McLaren for Bale are like next, next level. level. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what we've got here, the name of the wine is called Why Try So Hard. Um, probably and why just, the blends change all the time. Probably, <laughs> probably. And I, I don't mind that. It just adds that really sort of fun amount of interest. It peaks, I think, every single year. People are quite excited to see what this wine's going to, to mm. deliver. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and this here really is a big departure of the first two, the, um, uh, the two sort of musket um, mm. uh, derived um, orange wines. This one's a bit more sort of funky. Yeah, and very ox like oxidative kind of characters. Mm. Almost is it? Would you say a little bit of nothing too crazy? Retinomyces. Mm, mm, mm. I certainly got that there, but not in a bad way. Something that's more co like adding complexity rather than like a flaw. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't certainly sting it for myself. I'm not necessarily what we would call a Brett mm. Nazi. Mm. Um, I don't think that that, that this one really. Um, it can kind of capture that sort of style of flavor really, really well. Um, for me, the more fascinating thing is actually this sort of really cool, natural, intricate acid line. And it really highlights when you see wines with these great natural acid lines that there's like layers to them. It's not like one sort of big blocky, like yeah. powwow of like tartaric acid, but there's so many different intricate, it was like my mouth's watering. Yeah, it's, it's constantly just, just trying, to, trying to talk about this wine. It's very, it's journey. It's got that awesome kind of like brioche character as well super yeah, yeah absolutely um and i think that's one of the hallmarks of anything that's got like uh, a bit of like um yeast sediment mm. of course you can see it's a clear bottle here and and evidently uh quite cloudy as opposed to what we saw to like the the, the zbo by by brash higgins yeah which is a um, lot more had a lot more clarity i love this style yeah. this, this this is, is like fun. it's almost like a farmhouse style mm. um like turned up to 11. Yeah, it's like a size on -y kind of mm. like that yeah that same like kind of brioche character still comes through which is really cool all right well 
staying mm. around. So this is the Vale, right? McLaren Vale. So we've gone well south. Is it Vale? Or is it? We, we're not too sure. My, no, My law. So it's in, in, in the southern hills, but I, I would say a lot of the fruit would come from. This is just saying as a, as a ballpark guest. What is guessing, honestly? I'm okay with uh, I think it provides the intrigue for that one. I think it's cool. But, but absolutely delicious. Let's let's move on to something else that, that that's really fun. That um, also from around about the same area, um, we have um, in, in the Vale. And the Vale's been um, I'm going to say around about five or six years ago. It was actually quite um, got going through like a massive renaissance, mm. wasn't it? And still is like to to this day is going through um, you know a large renaissance. And one of those brands that really just blew people's minds and are continuing to to this mm. day is Alpha Box and Dice. And honestly, one of our favourite places to one of my favourite places to go on a Sunday afternoon. Like their cellar door is the it's most sick. relaxed, chill. It's like a like a big industrial shed, but there's a big old table out the front on a sunny day, have a bit of their Prosecco out the front with the cheese board. It's, What's the Prosecco it's called again? It's um, Zap Zap Tung. Tung. Yeah, it's so good. Delish. Um, so, um, uh, what Alpha Box and Dyson have actually done with this particular one has been pretty pretty fantastic. So, it's, um, it's a semi-on Viognier. Yep. Um, uh, all fruit from, I believe, from the Vale. Um, left on skins, not for too long, only like a couple of weeks. Um, but matured again. It's this this uh, awesome uh, adoration of like long long élevage in light of skins. It's not so much about getting those sort of fresh skin contact styles, although they're, they're, those do exist around Australia. Um, the, these guys are, are doing awesome. This is called the Golden Mullet uh, Fury. Um, these guys have, have have been on the market with this wine for for Christ near on. I'm going to say near on a decade. Yeah, they've been um, playing around with. Oh, I love their kind of idea of they're trying to make one wine for each letter of the alphabet, and still haven't achieved that goal but are getting quite close now but yeah i think this one's been kicking around a long time you'd probably know better than me mm. this one's probably been been making before i've, I've been able to drink uh, yeah well i remember working my first um first wine bars around adelaide working at cork wine cafe and pouring this um and it was really one of those sort of brands and wines that really got me into to seeing wine in a completely different perspective especially australian wine in a completely different perspective um and that's and it's not just the branding; it's how um, sort of avant-garde the style is. While still being, you know, it's not being pushed to the extent of say something like, you know, Yama. Um, yeah. It's it's actually in a really really approachable style. Again, on the orange index, we're not like sitting too mm. too nuts, too crazy. That wouldn't be a bad thing. But I think there's a style that you know, if people are still um, you know trying to get into. Uh, orange wine, yeah. that's pretty bad. If, you, if you're into more classical like white wines in South Australia, particularly stuff like you know Chardonnay mm. and old school Sammy on this is definitely not too far of a cry. It's got that kind of oak intervention that's nice and creamy and buttery and nice. Yeah, and it really, has a really, really cool, and I think it's the Viognier that's this sort of mm. like softer, oh, of like fleshier mid palate yeah. white. Uh, do you not know, see the nose, the sort of herbaceous sort of brambliness that's like really mm. a massive departure of the last mm. um, three wines. Uh, we're not looking at like big florals, you know, we're not looking at sort of barnyard funk and sort of developed characters or, you know, ancillary characters. Um, it is super fresh and it's got this sort of green herbaceousness mm. that just sort of teases out so much of that, um, uh, of that aroma. And it kind of gives a little bit of drive to the Viognier, which Viognier can quite often be like so waxy. Mm. So broad that doesn't have enough drive. Really cool wine. Really I cool think that's really, I, that's drinking really, really well. That's delicious. Mm. That's coming home with me tonight. <laughs> um, I've still got a big mind. I haven't decided yet. All right, new guys on the block. Back to new guys. Um, relatively new. They've been around a couple of years. They're doing some really awesome stuff. Um, and this is probably one of those wines that for me was like my my big aha wine. And I think yeah. for a lot of other people uh, discovering this wine brand for the first time. Um, they share the same, uh, very yeah. similar sentiments. Um, so these guys um, come from, we're going well north now, uh, out, out of uh, McLaren Vale, uh, not as far north as, as uh, the Riverland, but uh, we're looking at the Kerner boys. So this is uh, Jono and Damo, Damon, um, two brothers uh, in arms doing some really, really, really awesome stuff. So I believe they're based, um, their sort of main winery is based in the Adelaide Hills, um, but they've got... Um, they've got a property still in Clare in, um, in Watervale, I believe. Um, but yeah, they've, uh, this is all family property, family fruit, which is really cool. I think this is coming from like the more, um, yeah, the Watervale, southern parts of Watervale region in Clare, which is really cool. Just a bit of a note as well as a sideline. A lot of use of, of, of Diarm cork sort of coming back into it. I think um, I think this might be worthy of a, a different video. If, if you guys are interested to know sort of like 
we've got some particular thoughts surrounding the sustainability of screw cap versus yeah. cork so um perhaps if there's enough interest we'll we'll put something together that'll be really fun for you guys but um uh in the meantime let's um i'm gonna leave you can serve me this time yeah absolutely sure <laughs> oh this is this is probably one of my most sort like every year this gets released i get pretty excited because it's one of my favorite wines to drink um it's a vermentino that spans about two weeks yeah, full front center full front center what am i put doing Take awesome wine guys, yeah. seriously. Um, massive fan of this. 2018, so uh, it's already seen a little bit of, of um, uh, maturation as well. Um, so 20, got to keep in mind, especially for those of you who aren't from Australia watching this, um, our harvest occurs at the start of the year as opposed to the end of the year. So when you see something like 2018 on a bottle, it's not like it's come from the Northern Hemisphere and yep. it's been picked in like October, November. It's actually being picked in in typically like February, this will be like March, February. April. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would especially, I would say, look, they would know best, but I, I believe this would be around about sort of late Feb, early March in, yeah, in Clear so. Valley. Um, cool. Well, what, what do we have for winemaking notes on this? Uh, three weeks open ferment uh, on skins, uh, plunge, plunge once a day, and then it's all in stainless steel for six months on fine leaves. Um, but this is more of that kind of grapefruit pithy. Really fun, lean, pretty take oh, on Vermentino. It's so yummy. Is it's acid? so good. I know I must be getting hung, I hung up on acid yet. today, but mm. um, again, really cool, fun, intricate acid line that's not so so blocky or so sort of like mm. in your face or anything like that. Um, and on the orange scale, again, sort of not um, not so out there, a little bit cloudy. Um, but uh, I don't. Again, these these styles aren't so like abrupt. I think that that's one of those things that um, you know v a lot of commentary around this sort of style of wine is that it's weird, it's wacky, and it's like, I wouldn't necessarily pick that as being so wacky. It's I haven't delicious. I haven't found any of these ones that we had um, unapproachable or crazy out there, um, even though the winemakers' brains might be um, for all good reasons. Yeah. Um, these are. The, I think these are still, like you could pretty much serve any one of these and just go, oh wow, it's fantastic. This is something you could take home to dad, and they go, oh, that's cool. This is interesting. Yeah, 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 I really yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Particularly, like, these, are, these are like gateway wines. These are gateway wines, and I think we've. Uh, this is one of my favourite gateway wines. This is this is springtime drinking at its finest. Something about Pagato. I don't know anything about the name behind, like how it got to be known as Pagato. I, I believe like this is uh, like an Italian yeah. name for either the particular style of variety, like a synonym. But Pagato, just I don't know. There's something about like. It's fun. I'm I'm thinking about like pulled pork sliders right now, <laughs> like I don't know why that, yeah, that yeah. that's that's the case. Bit of bit of porchetta. It's, it's super cool, heady. super yeah. cool. Um, and again, like none of these, I, I think, in terms of the conventional conventional sense, um, really are, are, are wines that are um, you typically associate with with being from Australia. This is not like a Claire wine. No, no, this Claire is, is not like Claire. straight up and down Riesling, old school Shiraz Malbec. Yeah. Um, you know, cool sort of eucalypti menthol reds. Um, like this really breaks that mold, and I love it. And the fact that these guys are young, doing doing an awesome thing, and they're really uh, fun. Like, you ever do gun. get a chance to meet um, uh, Damo and Jono, they're freaking fun dudes. Raining young gun winemakers of uh, yeah. 2019, so yeah, they're definitely doing some awesome stuff. And they've got a whole bunch of, I think they've got three different brands as well. They've got the Brothers brand, they've got Leco, which is Leco, Leco, Leco. and yeah, Brothers Brothers Wine Co. Yeah, and they're doing got, some really fun stuff. Yeah, very Super. cool. Um, now, no, if you'll note, everything so far has actually been from South Australia, um, but we have it. We have an imposter here. Well, yes. Okay, yes, sorry, troubles. sorry, truffles. We, 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 have, we have a dog in the studio here. Um, if if you know anything about like Unico Zello and and especially on our Instagram page, yeah. you'll see a lot of posts about um, our little dog. People email us with the sign off, uh, with, including truffles and emails. Laura and I get referred to as Mr. and Mrs. Truffles. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's by, happened. By the government. Mol by the government. <laughs> just like those, those government social media hackers that just yeah. like mucky our names up. Um, but we've got a bit of imposter. This one, this one I'm, I'm dying to try. So I was like, yeah. I couldn't stop myself from buying this in the store. The this is day. one of my favorite young um, makers in the country. Uh, this is Ladder. Um, so I, I believe this is a, a, a pretty, Pretty nutso out there wine. He's he's uh, another young uh, winemaker. That oh, here we go. It's it's like a it's like a broken. Oh wow! Screw cap. See this is when good screw caps go bad, folks. Um, <laughs> Doesn't happen with cork except it just breaks. Let's see if I can jerry rig this. Oh yes. There we go. Success. We've done that. Let's have a look. Let's have a gander. So, um, ooh, yeah. How sick's that? What variety is it? This is Pinot Gris. It's Pinot Gris. 
uh, I think it's two weeks uh, on skins and then split between stainless and barrel and I think it's been about eight months. So ex Nihilo? Ex Nihilo. Nihilo. Sorry Owen if I'm like mispronouncing that. <laughs> Completely my bad. Um, really cool. Again, another really awesome style on the Ori, and this is like this is an established style. Like um, uh, so, Pinot Gris on its skins quite often is known as Ramato, which means copper, copper in Italian. Um, so, and we've actually done this before. Remember, did you ever see Flint and Fire from Unico? No, nah, way oh, before my time. Yeah, it was like way the, the OG Esoterico. It was really cool. Was that 2014? Um, oh, I think it was. I think it was actually. Far out. Um, and really cool uh, expression of Pinot Gris. Again, Pinot Gris or Grigio can, can often be, especially in warmer countries, quite broad. Um, so bringing things around sort of the idea of, of building a wine around the structure, texture of something uh, can be really, really smart. Um, five, that's sick, isn't it? <laughs> it is like, uh, strawberries, like balsamic strawberries. Yeah, no, no, but have you, um, uh, now I'm not sure if this is like a global like candy or anything, but like um, strawberries and cream. Yeah, literally the lollies. The ones that you used to be able to like lick, lick on the back and then chuck at the movie screen so it looked like every <laughs> all, the, all the actors had zits. Did you ever do that? No, I did not do that. It was but just me. It was just <laughs> you. Just you just rambunctious <laughs> Brisbane yeah, it's, boy, it's, just it's, throwing it's, it's the lollies. It's like, it's like no, my, that's for eating. It's my, <laughs> it's my ADHD plan up again. Um, <laughs> But no, it smells exactly like strawberry creams. It's yeah. really quite confectionery. It's odd that cream cream doesn't really have much mm. of a smell, but it's almost like the um, the the sort of tangential sensation, the actual mm. like. That's a really it comes cool. Comes through in the texture. I as just well. want to smell that all day. It's not like smelling oh. the white floral things, is it? No, it's a lot more confectionery. Yeah, yeah. And it tastes just like it as well. It is that texture is just so much fun. It's like it's got tannin, mm. but it's got the, this really kind of cool fleshy mid palate. Wait, should be able to mouse. This is an incredibly like well made wine. It's so much. I, yeah, it, like like you need to like really from a winemaker's perspective, trying to get every single one of these little elements in balance is. Um, uh, I shouldn't be talking this up so much because it's from Victoria. Um, <laughs> It's from Victoria? Yeah, it uh, is look, from Victoria. Look, it's SA versus Vic all the time. But <sighs> yeah, we've got some cool young Vickies. Winning like again. A, yeah, winning again. That yeah. was that's, this is this is one of the, this is probably for me, star lineup. Now I know our own wine's in this, but yeah. I, I have a, a little love for this. It's fantastic. Yeah, guys, um, if you if you can find this particular wine, you should buy it. In fact, you should buy all of these wines. Oh, let's do a bit of a lineup here. Um, yeah, so what are you be what will you be taking home today? What, what will I hope? I'm 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 shotgunning the the, the ladder. The ladder um, ladder's think, yours. And that's, oh. um, I it's don't pretty, know. And and it's one of those things that um, out of all, you know, it's it's really changing the the, the mode of of Australian wine mm. right now, isn't it? I, I am so glad to see a whole bunch of producers just take their own. Like these are so all, like n there's very very completely different lines in all of these wines, kind of excluding um, these two because they come from the same place and the same grape. But yeah. They still approached in different ways, but this wildly is just different. A, a very very esoteric a a <laughs> lineup of wines, but all really cool. And then, you know, like we have given one Victorian, but there's still a whole bunch of great. So when we do have, uh, we felt that, you know, a 10 or 20 minute tasting was gonna be too much. We've got a whole bunch more to actually include um, that we wanna to talk to you about. And I think this is gonna be centered around one of the most iconic um, uh, wine regions in yeah. Australia, the Barossa. Not for orange. Not, <laughs> not from orange, <laughs> not made of oranges. Just orange by nature orange, and by color. Orange wines from the Barossa is next. Up. Is next. I think we're gonna we're gonna really, check out really rad stuff. But guys, um, enjoy. I hope hopefully you've actually learned something a little bit about Australian wine here and a, and a, some of the really really cool things that are actually happening uh, down under. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, enjoy some really great um, great Aussie wines. I want to just fight you for that. Let's go. Cheers, guys. <laughs>